Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel, Ben and Ashley, and we have a very special guest today here with us, Amber, who's been doing medical medium for seven years now, which is amazing. Uh, but she, before that, dealt with rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia, and so many more other crazy symptoms and conditions that she's gonna talk about with us here today. Amber, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you, thank you for having me. Gosh, it's really an honor. I'm such a big fan of you guys, and I just feel so blessed to be able to come on and chat with you guys and share a bit of my journey and wisdom. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so what we what we'd like to do is maybe have you go into your story before you found medical medium. So, like your dealings with conventional medicine, what they were telling you, your symptoms, your conditions, what they were diagnosing you with. I think a lot of people can relate relate to your story. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so let's jump in. Um, again, my name is Amber Whiting. A lot of people know me from Instagram as Amber Holistic Nurse Coach. Um, but just a background about me first, if I may, before I get into my health stuff. I've always kind of been in the healthcare field. Even as a child, I was the one that was trying to make healthier meals for the family um, and just always was very um, concerned and worried actually about everyone's health, my grandmothers, my parents, my sister, everybody. Um, so eventually I kind of got into being a pharmacy tech. I did that for eight years. I worked at a hospital uh, for five years doing that. I went to nursing school and I've been a nurse since 2009. And I had somebody tell me once, it makes perfect sense, like the reason why you went through nursing school is because you are um, you have a medicine woman archetype, and so that's what you were meant to do in this life. And it really struck me, um, and I can totally see that um, as being so true and amazing. But the thing that's really powerful is, yes, I've been on the other side, right? I've worked in an emergency room. I've been at an inpatient rehabilitation center at a level one trauma center. Um, I've been a nurse case manager in many different units, oncology, pediatrics. Um, worked from home as a nurse case manager, nurse care manager. And throughout that process, I found myself with some pretty severe symptoms and um, started getting a mystery chronic illness, which is what Anthony, Anthony calls it. And so um, after the birth of my first child, this was in 2011, all of my health came crashing down very quickly. So that was really the trigger for me was birth. The labor itself was incredible. I was very healthy. But if I were to look back, I can tell you all the symptoms. Like throughout that pregnancy, I had severe sinusitis. And um, even before that, going back into childhood and elementary school, I had an overactive bladder and they were constantly doing tests on me even in elementary school. And we just kind of chalked it up to, oh, it's no big deal, Amber just, goes to the bathroom all the time, you know, and now we know it's strep from, um, from, from Anthony's information, Anthony Williams, medical medium. So um, after I had my daughter, that was when things radically changed for me. Six days after I had her, I had to have my appendix removed, oh my and then I had to have a tooth pulled, and then all of a sudden I was getting headaches every day. And then all of a sudden I was with severe, severe muscle and joint pain in my upper body and then it spread out to my joints. And before she was even um, eight months old, I had a heart arrhythmia and so I spent, I literally thought I was going to die. I was in an ambulance on my way to the ER that I worked at as a registered mm -hmm. nurse. And my heart rate was 220. And I remember before it got that high, I had texted um, I had texted my husband, I really thought like that was it. And so it was a very scary time. I just didn't understand what was happening to my body and quite frankly, the doctors had no answers either. And that's, that was my life for the next five years. It was five years of um, hell. I mean, there's really no other way to put it. I spent a lot of hours, you know, wearing a heart monitor. I wore one for a month when my baby was really small. 
and that was hard for me. Um, you know, I had to click this button when I had uh, uh, symptoms like chest pain and things like that. And so I spent a lot of time at the cardiologist's office, at the neurologist's office for migraines that I was diagnosed with. I was on benzodiazepines at this point because they basically discharged me after that ICU stay with anxiety pills. They said, we don't really know what's happening, but you need to go to the cardiologist and here's some Xanax. <laughs> and uh, man, it was, such a, it was such a terrifying time. Yeah, yeah. And so at that point, I was only working two days a week and I could barely even do that. I actually had to take a lot of time off just to recoup from that hospital stay. And then I had to reevaluate my career. I was like, gosh, I can't even handle being in an ER with my health like this. So after three years of that, I had to switch um, to nurse case management, which is a blessing. I, I, I totally love my background in helping people. Uh, but my health was just <laughs> in the dumps. I mean, um, eventually I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. And that's a, for me, that was a big deal because I saw a lot of people come into the ER with chronic pain and they were judged so heavily and my heart just broke. So I was like, oh my gosh, nobody's gonna understand or take me serious and I was crushed. I was so crushed because you couldn't see the pain. You couldn't see the suffering that I was going through. I was trying to take care of my daughter. We're a military family. And so there was no family around. It was just us. And we had to go to the ER a lot. I rode in the ambulance a lot because of my heart. It was just a, it was a very stressful time, which eventually led me down to a really dark road of uh, depression, honestly. Um, after the rheumatologist diagnosed me with fibromyalgia and then eventually RA, which is rheumatoid arthritis, at that point I was like over the edge, severely depressed, because all of these labels I knew as an RN would be basically what I took it as my life sentence. And I knew I wouldn't be able to be active and do the things that I loved. And I was so wrong, which you'll hear more about in just a little bit, but, um, yeah, it was really tough. There were there were there were moments of severe severe darkness that I did not think I was going to make it out of. I had some hospital stays for the suicidal depression, and every time I went to the psychiatrist, the psychologist, the pain clinic, the cardiologist, the neurologist, what did they all do? They prescribed medicine. <laughs> And I'm laughing now, and it's really not funny. It's not, um, because, because of my background, being a pharmacy tech and then becoming a registered nurse, I thought that was the answer. Right. So I did what I thought was responsible in helping myself so that I could be a healthy mom for my daughter and a healthy wife and a nurse, because I just wanted to help right. people. And I couldn't even do that if I wasn't feeling myself. So, um, it was a big source of stress for me, just going to all the doctors, seeing all the appointments in my calendar. I would get very overwhelmed and very stressed out. And the biggest thing for me was I wanted to be well enough to be able to handle a move because my family moves every two to four years. It's a, it's a big deal being in the military. They ask a lot of you. And of course, I'm, I love the lifestyle, but it's absolutely horrifying when you don't feel well enough and you're constantly stressed about, am I going to be well enough to handle if my husband's deployed, right? And I'm so sick. So we were fortunate enough to be uh, what's called special needs. And luckily, my husband wasn't actually deployed for about seven years. So that was a blessing. And um, yeah, my goal was just to be um, healthy enough so that I could do laundry without pain, so that I could take a shower without excruciating pain standing. It hurt to sit on the toilet. Like, it, my hips were in so much pain I couldn't sleep on my sides. Um, uh, the RA got so bad that I couldn't grip a steer steering wheel and, um, you know, holding, holding a can or a jar, I would drop stuff. My hand grip was really weak. So it got really bad to where I couldn't even wear like the shoes that I wanted to wear because my feet started hurting and the bones and joints in my feet 
were hurting. So I wore what was called my old man shoes, <laughs> my old man tennis shoes. And it was, I just wasn't myself. I was uh, a completely different version of me. And I'm going to tell you too, I think a lot of people with chronic illness can relate. My relationships were like down in the dumps. It's not like that for everybody, but for me it was. I just wasn't myself and a lot of people didn't understand what was happening and so I lost friendships. Family members were like, what's going on with her? And it was just a completely different um, interaction and I felt very isolated. Yeah. And so uh, the depression was really hard. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I really kept relationships like it. You know, I was kind of the... the uh, the kooky vegan guy, you know, and well, we have laughter. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Once I found medical medium, and you know, it just, oh, yeah, yeah. It just changes I your see. your way of thinking. And now you you know you don't you don't those relationships aren't as fun as they used to be, right? Because everybody else is doing something, and you might not even want to be doing that, or your head is somewhere else. You know, it's hard to hang out with those same. people yes yes that lifestyle that you don't really believe in anymore exactly yes yes i can absolutely relate to that i think you definitely nailed it with that um and there's a lot to say about that where you can really unpack just the healing journey itself and the self-evolution journey of cleansing the physical body and soul and spirit and mind and heart being cleansed and you're just on your own journey and um, you're soaring and you're up here and they're kind of down there and they're suffering still. And I think that there's really, we could literally do a whole nother show on that. Um, well, but yeah. Well, they don't know yeah. they're suffering. Yeah, for sure. And I'm grateful for people like you. That <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's uh, so, go ahead. so, So um, I think that's really, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, my background and just uh, my story and in, in, in my journey. Those are really like the big points, I guess, if you will, um, you know, all the labels that I was given anxiety, depression. I was even told at one point I was bipolar, which totally flipped me out. So I was like, this is insane. They're just throwing multiple labels at me when I'm clearly just having a hard time dealing with what's happening to my body, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, I had colonoscopies because there was stuff going on with my gut. And then, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. The RA, the fibro, the heart arrhythmia, all these things. And I just kept praying like, God, please just help me to heal so that I can do laundry, so that I can take care of my family, so that I can move and like handle it because we went through one move literally from North Carolina to Virginia. And so it's just a few hour drive, but I had to have help. I couldn't even drive the whole way. And I literally had to stop at one point and find a grassy area just to lay down. I was that sick. And so if you can imagine, it's just, it's very scary to even like think about, um, think about that. And my daughter was three at the time. So at this point, basically her whole life I've been really struggling. So um, my mother-in-law, um, not my mother-in-law, I'm sorry, my sister-in-law actually told me, hey, there's this guy I found on Facebook, his name's Anthony William, medical medium, and I've been doing some of the things he's been saying, and it, my, fib my fibromyalgia is so much better. Mm -hmm. And at first I was mad <laughs> because I used to get angry when people, when people would tell me that, oh, just do this. It's going to work. Yeah. It's going to help you. I would get so mad because I was over yeah. it. At that point, I had tried so much stuff that it didn't matter what you told me. I knew it wasn't going to work. Right. But eventually I was like, all right, well, let me check this guy out. So I did. I saw he had a book coming out in October of 2015. I started implementing some of his stuff that I saw online. Mm -hmm that he was posting. And then the day that book came out, I went to the store and I bought it. Check out video two we did with Amber as she discusses her healing timeline once she found medical medium. And check out some of the other great videos we did with Amber. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Bye.